Hi, welcome to Elizabeth Reads. We are reading Jemima Small, and we are presently on chapter 36. It's called DNA. In the logic and strategy zone, an educator with curly red hair showed me to a booth which contained a yellow table and two chairs facing each other. And it was tiny. My cheeks flushed as I pushed the chair back as far against the wall as I could. I'm so sorry, Jemima, she said, pushing the divider back a bit so I could at least breathe. Space is really tight in this zone. The others aren't so squashed, which was nice of her and totally embarrassing at the same time. She disappeared and then came back a minute later with a boy who looked a few years younger than me. He was wearing a suit with a matching waistcoat, waistcoat and yellow tie, and his hair was parted in the middle. He looked like he jumped straight out of a Charles Dickens novel, which was appropriate because his badge name said Oliver. He shook my hand and said, hi, I'm Ollie, and I'm going to completely annihilate you. Before I could say anything, the educator turned over a chart on the wall. On it were pictures of fruits, each with a number next to it. It took me about 0.5 seconds to figure out we would be doing algebraic equations. A tiny fizz of excitement and maybe relief shot through me as she explained the rules. I tried to steady my hands. It was only choosing the right fruits to solve the equations. I told myself it was mental math. I'd done this a million times with Mrs. Lee, and this time I didn't have Lottie blowing her cheeks out at me. I just had Oliver Twist glaring at me instead. I took a deep breath as the agitator placed a yellow buzzer on the table in between us. 148, she said, and clicked a timer. I scanned the values on the chart, searching for a way to make 148. It took me almost 10 seconds to work it out because I was so nervous. Luckily, Ollie wasn't any quicker. I pressed the, buzz the buzzer. Pineapple times apple squared minus the grapes. Correct. I blew out a long breath as Ollie gave me evils all over the table. After 20 questions, I'd beaten him 18 to two. I stood up, shook his head and said, it was good meeting you, Ollie. I mean, annihilating you. After that, I beat a girl called Shanad at Brain Teasers, solved logic problems faster than Diego, cracked more codes than Madison and then messed up a chess game against Zane. A klaxon sounded, and Damien Jones bellowed down the microphone. End of your first zone. There was a short break, so I filled up my bottle from the water station near the stage and sat down. The room felt really stuffy, but I didn't want to take off my blazer. I dabbed the sweat on my top lip with a tissue and wafted my schedule to get some air on my face. I kept forgetting I'd given my phone to Dad and reached into my pocket a few times to get it. I had a cereal bar in there, but I hated eating in crowds, so I sat and watched the other people. Some competitors were standing in groups chatting, but a lot were like me, just sitting on the edge of the room. A boy nearby, whose name badge said Andrew, was reciting the 223 times table. Some people were smiling, some looked defeated already. I guess I was in the middle, like Jupiter, and approximately the same temperature as its core. When the klaxon sounded, I double-checked my schedule, then headed to the med memory zone, where I had 10 minutes to memorize picture cards, 100 of them. I spread them out on the table and took a few deep breaths through my nose. It's called belly breathing. It helps get more oxygen to your brain, according to the NHS website. I did some strategy Googling when I was on the train. Not that I really needed it. I'd been able to memorize a whole pack of cards since I was seven years old, and I'd managed all 78 of Luna's tarot cards last week. I cracked my knuckles, picked up the cards, and shuffled them just like Jasper. When 10 minutes was up, a man with a thin mustache came in with a clipboard and a timer. I had two minutes to recite as many objects as I could. I took a deep breath and closed my eyes. I was on 32, a pink octopus, when I made the mistake of opening my eyes. Lottie was standing opposite my booth. She was about five meters away, but I could still see her filling her cheeks with air. I don't know what happened to my brain after that. In fact, I do. There's this chemical called norepinephrine that makes your brain freeze up. After that, I could only remember a few cards before the time ran out. And you don't have to be a brainiac to know that 35 out of 100 was light years away from good enough. In the next booth, I had to memorize a metro map of Paris. It had approximately a million destinations and was approximately impossible to remember. My opponent was called Daniel. He'd drawn a smiley face with sunglasses on his badge underneath his name. Hello, Jemima, or should I say bonjour? He overpronounced bonjour exactly the way Jasper did. I knew I had to beat him. 
The agitator clicked a timer and then read out impossible sounding questions like which station is five stops northwest from Concord and how many st stations contain the letter T? Daniel kept overpronouncing the French words, which was so annoying it seemed to supercharge the neurons in my brain. And in three minutes, I'd won 14 to six. In the next zone, I got full marks in the spelling test, anagrams, and vocabulary matchup, but didn't do so well in the foreign words round. It started okay. I mean, when you live with Jasper, you can't not know that Arane means spider in French. And when Miki's your best friend, you know sensei is teacher in Japanese. Afsal had taught us some Arabic in form time last year, and I knew a few Polish words from Alina, but I had to guess the rest, which was annoying. They really ought to teach you Luxembourgish at school. When the klaxon sounded, it was time for my final zone, the universe of knowledge. I sat at a yellow table with a buzzer in front of me and the late morning sun blazing through the windows onto my face. Sweat was soaking through my shirt at the back. I had to take my blazer off. I peeled it down my arms and put it over the back of my chair, then tucked my chair right up against the table. Jemima, we meet again. It was Zane who'd beaten me at chess earlier. Good luck. I wished him luck too, and silently wished for there not to be any sweat on the plastic chair when I stood up. Our educator told us, this game's really straightforward. Quick fire general knowledge. Buzz as soon as you know the answer. If you're wrong, you lose a point and your opponent gets a try. Good luck. May your brains be with you. He raised the question cards and I placed my trembling hand on the buzzer. The first question is the chemical symbol AU before I even had a chance to blink, Zane had hit his buzzer, gold. I'm afraid I hadn't finished the question, Zane, the agitator said, adjusting his glasses. You go on to minus one point and Jemima, you now have a chance to answer. The chemical symbol AU has which atomic number? I smiled awkwardly at Zane, 79? Correct. Time flew by faster than a cosmic ray, and after 20 seconds, our scores were tied, which could only mean one thing, a tiebreaker. Zane wished me luck, and the adjudicator said, which constellation is home to the Ring Nebula? I hit the buzzer at approximately the speed of light, the northern constellation of Lyra. It's the kind of thing you know when you gaze at the stars with your auntie a lot. Good match, Jemima Small, Zane said, shaking my hand. You've got a big brain in there. And my smile probably went as wide as the ring nebula, but it faded quickly because the next opponent walked in, Lottie Freeman. I closed my eyes. I knew she'd be staring at me. I wished I hadn't taken my blazer off. I folded my arms tight across my tummy and tried to ignore my heartbeat, which was increasing by the second. I took some deep breaths and focused on what I knew about the nervous system. It releases chemicals in your brain to help you respond to danger. It's probably what helped our early ancestors survive all those millions of years ago. Sometimes those chemicals give you brain freeze, but sometimes they surge through your brain like a superpower. I opened my eyes. Predictably, Lottie was staring at me. Thought you'd fallen asleep. She tilted her head slightly. This is probably quite exhausting for you. Just then, an educator with bright blue hair walked into our booth. Take a deep breath, girls. It will help your nerves. A titanium crystal was hanging from her neck, glowing electric blue in the light. Luna had one of those. She said they're so energizing they awaken all of your seven chakras. Before that, I didn't even know I had one chakra. Good luck, Jemima, Lottie said in her angelic voice. That's right, Lottie. It's not a battle. Just answer as many questions as you can in three minutes. May your brains be with you. The lady smiled and held up the question cards. The Brainiac's lightning bolt logo glinted gold in the sunshine. My heart pounded in my chest as Gina's words came back to me. Hold your head up. I sat up straight in my chair, put my hand on my buzzer, and looked at Lottie with stone cold eyes. Eyes like my great great aunties in those old photographs, as though I could feel their blood pumping through my veins. It is a battle. I thought, but I have beard growing, bare knuckle fighting, mind reading woman in my DNA, and I don't plan to lose. That's the end of chapter 36. Make sure you subscribe and then you'll know when the next chapter comes out. Bye-bye.